Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the other, um, some more things you could do. CLC, useful command, clears out the command window. We still have all those variable values. Now if I type clear all, it clears out all the variables so that we're back to base. There's no variables with assigned values. And basically we've cleaned out our, our command line. That lets us try some new things. We can do uh, an array this way. We can do an array another array, same size, and now we can do arrays are, and matrices are the same thing, so just a a, uh, a one by nine matrix. You can do the basic uh, those basic guys. We could also create a one by nine matrix using that colon notation. Notice by default it goes up by ones unless the uh, well just default it goes up by ones and then you can also explicitly tell it to go up by ones, but you can say go up by. 0.1 or 0 0.01 or 2 or 5 or 22.77. So here we go. Now we've got every value from 0 to 1 by 0 0.01. Now this is useful if you want to do uh, create big um, big arrays for domains and things, there are functions like mean um, built in that'll give you the average value of an array. And there's a help function. That help function, if you type help mean, will give you will tell you how the mean function works and all the functions, it, it's a general feature of MATLAB implementations that help and the command will, uh, will give you information on it. Now, we CLC and clear all to get everything cleared out again. Now we're going to use, D is going to be the domain of a function. We're going to look at a function between negative 2 pi and 2 pi by increments of 0.1. Now I want you to see negative 2 times pi, 0 0.1, 2 times pi. I'm putting a semicolon at the end. And notice when I put the semicolon at the end, it doesn't print out all the values. That semicolon suppresses the output. It's still stored up here, right? So you do x equals 7, it prints out x equals 7. If you do y equals negative 4, semicolon, it suppresses the output. It doesn't have to put it on the screen. Now I want to, let's go back and look at that again. F equals the sine of D. And what we got is F being a function with those values for D plugged in. So it's giving you the sine of each one of the values inside the function F. And that's really cool because now we can do something called plot. And now we've just created a plot of f, and f is the sign of those values.